back, you guys. This is the second episode of Poppin' Off with Dr. Pimple Popper and... Your SD bestie. This show is about me, Dr. Pimple Popper, and my best friend, Raquel, who is an esthetician. And we're gonna really kind of divulge our skincare secrets. And really get into deep conversations about just life. And being who we are, and our craziness, and her craziness <laughs> in my life, and also learn about skincare. Today, we're gonna put my SD bestie to the ultimate test. I'm gonna pass. I'm gonna pass. Okay, you don't even know what it is, but yes. Any test. Have you ever failed a test? Absolutely, I failed yes. a test. I failed my driving test like three times. You of did? course I did. I didn't I'm know, know that. I'm driver. <laughs> Cheers, Cheers to besties. besties. We are going to be talking about Botox and burgers today. We're gonna to be eating our In N Out burger, which we love so much, while at the same time, actually, as talking about Botox. We all thought of this idea from Selling Sunset Botox and burgers. And I mean, it is the two essentials food and Botox. I mean, come on. I'm genius. <laughs> They had an open house and they were selling real estate and they were kind of saying, hey guys, come on in for some Botox and burgers. So cute and we're hungry, we love In-N-Out Burger and we are what well, I am, the expert at Botox. Well, she really is. <laughs> that, what a great way to sell real estate. Right? In fact, they should have me over there and I'll do the Botox while they're trying to sell real estate and yeah. I can get a cut. And I'll eat the burgers. burgers. I mean, Botox is fantastic. I always tell people it is the, one of the most amazing treatment options because it's no downtime really and really low risk. And I'm not saying everybody should do it, but I do think that there's small little areas that people can do that can make them feel better about themselves. And it's not super expensive when you're talking about just doing small areas. I mean, I was a little scared in the beginning and it did take me a while to get on board. I do love it, obviously. I love how I look after, but I was scared. But and you I, look I still, you don't use a lot. So I do, that's but I do still worry that about the side effects later on. So that's my thing. And, Right. But you know, she always. I think feel it's been around it. long enough. I'm much more worried about side effects of other things that we have around us than than I am about like Botox per se. But that is also why you don't get fake Botox. Exactly what she said. What I'm seeing in the esthetician world is a lot of estheticians doing injectables, and they're just getting it for half the price. And that's, that's not, dangerous. yeah, very dangerous. Definitely see a professional, see a doctor. It's so important. So let's talk a little bit about Botox because I, I will have to say, I think on social media these days, people are much more knowledgeable about skincare in general, but I think that it's really interesting to know the science behind this. What Botox does is it prevents a muscle from moving temporarily. It's actually blocking the release of acetylcholine, which is a neurotransmitter from the presynaptic junction. So for something to happen, for a muscle to twitch, there has to be signals, okay? And so there's like sort of like a signal from this presynaptic receptor. And what it does is it releases neurotransmitter and then it communicates it to the postsynaptic receptor and that's when you trigger a muscle movement. So now they're not communicating anymore. It blocks it from kind of communicating and that's why you don't have the muscle move. The most common area is here between your eyes because it helps prevent you from frowning. Actually, I could get a little bit of Botox because I think mine has run out. But I think we have a beautiful model. I'd like to welcome Steph here and I thought that it would be really nice to show how we sort of do it in the office other than I'm not usually wearing a hoodie and Raquel's not usually breathing down your neck either. <laughs> and I really like to show how I address Botox and how we talk about it. And she might not be a candidate at all, so I don't know, but I have the I have product here to potentially treat her. So I'm gonna treat you really as every other patient I would. You have never had Botox before. Never. Right, okay, and so you're considering doing it. Mm -hmm. What do you know about Botox actually at this point? It's more of like a preventative kind of measure. Like Prevent. wrinkles and things from okay. forming. And so I just know that it kind of like keeps you from like being as expressive. Okay. But yeah, as I've been thinking about it, I wouldn't want to like freeze my face necessarily, yes. but just Good. like enough to be like a little expressive still. Right, and I think that that's the key. I mean, the minority of people, at least the people that I see, they don't want to have themselves completely frozen. It actually was a little hard for me to get Raquel to initially do it. Yeah. She didn't want to do it and I would kept saying, uh, I think because she had these For deep years, little lines. My personal opinion yeah, is I enough. think that you should wait as right. much as you can. I know that you pushed it for many years because I did have these 11s here. I don't think I pushed it. Oh my say. God, really? I was, well, you were like, you need to get it done. Do you know uh, how bad your 11s were But look now? at them now. Like I waited and they're gone now because yes. you 
made it. But you, you had so it. many years of it being like, like But I, it's okay. <laughs> I was scared. This is face by Dr. Lady. It is, honestly. It is, it is. Just and kidding. I do look just great kidding. because of you. You look but, beautiful. But I did have 11s, but now I don't. So I, I just... I was a little scared, and I, I, right. and I have two daughters, no and I talk to them about it all the time. I have a daughter who's 20, I have a daughter who's 17, and they obviously know that I've done it, and I did tell them I waited. I get that. I understand that. You can wait. I'm saying that the age is not necessarily a hard or fast number, because there are some people that are 18 that have yeah. really deep true. grooves, so that's not what I'm saying. That's there true. are some 60-year-olds that have no lines. They don't need it, so it really is dependent on the person, so that that's all I'm saying. Yeah. How old are you? That? 31. I think I finally gave in when I was 39. No way. Like a couple years, 38 No, though. girl, okay. Oh my gosh, Please. look at your charts. But Stop. like, I would think it was like, probably like five years. I'm gonna say 35, 36. No, like because of my 35th birthday. No, I wasn't doing well, that. Whatever, it's not about you. Anyway, it's about <laughs> stuff. <laughs> the three most common areas that we treat First most common area is the glabella, which is the 11th, which Raquel has done before. And the reason it works so well there is there's specific muscles that creates this frown. The second most common area that people use it is for the orbicularis oculi, or the muscle that causes what we call the crow's feet, these lines here. I don't get it there on uh, myself. I don't like it there because it actually makes me feel a little bit like a bad person because when I'm laughing at someone's joke, I feel like I'm fake laughing. I want to like tell them, I, I swear I, I'm not being fake. <laughs> it made me feel bad, but that is actually why it works so well here because this is a frown line. So when you're angry, you make that line or you're concerned or like, and you don't like that look. So it actually makes you feel happier in many ways because you can't frown so much. The third most common area is the forehead lines. That is not for everybody. These forehead lines are created because you raise your eyebrows up and down. That's the frontalis muscle. And some people who have heavy brows, it's just gonna make you feel heavy. Like you can't, I've had it done there myself and I hated it because I couldn't look up. I couldn't raise my eyebrows up. Actually, when you did it like a few years ago. We did just um, a little bit And right then there. I started creating a line here and I remember right. I was so upset with her and I sent her a video. I was like, I never had this wrinkle here. And then she's like, she's okay. Up. Because I guess it was I like, mean, you know, this issues. wasn't moving, but then this was. But that's what's nice about it. It goes away. What are you concerned with, first of all? Um, Not that you have anything to be concerned about. Um, probably like around right. here, okay. just a little okay. bit. Yes, I think um, that's fine. I feel like that's like Because when you smile, you feel like you get a little like bit of a crease, yes. I'm like trying to figure out like which part of my face right. is like gonna be aging the fastest kind right. of a thing. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's probably the part that I'm like, starting yes. to notice more. So smile lines is like I said, the second most popular area. It is a nice place for you to do this because I do think she gets a little bit of a crease here and that stays around, so it'll help to soften that out. I always tell people with Botox around the crow's feet is we're not gonna fully get rid of the lines at all because you're, when your cheeks come up, you're gonna lift up in that area too and I'm not preventing you from smiling. You know what I mean? You're still gonna smell these beautiful <laughs> yeah. cheeks. So we can soften that, and I'm just gonna do a little bit, like a couple injection points, maybe two units on each side. And the common traditional way is four, four, and four, so 12 units on each side. So if you find somebody that's just doing that on everybody, that's like a warning sign that they don't really look at the person and how their muscles move, because everybody's a little bit different. So mm -hmm. I think for you, it would be great to just do that. If that's what mm -hmm. you wanted to do. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah, do okay. It. Oh, you're gonna be able to assist me, actually. I am. So just gently dab, just like around her eye where the smile line is. Give me I a big smile. A okay, and we're just gonna wipe off the makeup just so. Did you actually take a video beforehand? I for did you to not. do, so that you could see the difference. Okay. So can you um, smile and not smile? Okay, relax, and then. Let me do it from the side, smile. This is just the way I do it. Everybody does it a little differently. I feel where the orbital bone is, the edge of her, I'm just gonna mark you off and give me a big smile. So I see where her creases are the most. So usually just try to keep it a centimeter outside of the, I'm just gonna go right between those two. It's so interesting how different races are different in terms of their, where the positioning of the edge of your orbital bone. Some people are, yours is closer and for me, and some of our like Hispanic and Asian, I, it's farther away. So we use a very small little needle, it's tiny. So I'm just gonna do two units in each, okay? So it's very straightforward. Just gonna feel one little baby picture. How you doing, okay? Yeah, great. She really has such a good like, okay, go hand. Turn to your other way, face is gonna be. So, how does it feel? Because you're not going back. 
<laughs> That's it. You don't go back. You have little bumps where you put Botox in that goes away in five minutes. You'll see the little bumps, but by the time she gets to the car, they're gone. And then you're actually not going to see it working for like a few days. You'll be like, nothing's happening. And then all of a sudden, it takes like about a week, you'll start to slowly see it working. And that's it. You've been back That was so easy. Yes. And so that lasts about three to five months or so, really. But you'll, it you won't be like you wake up one day and you turn into a pumpkin. Like, it won't be gone. It's just like it's slowly, you can see your muscles starting to work again. So see how that goes, okay? Thank you so much. Yes, of course. Thank you. So I have a few questions about Botox that okay. some people sent over. So how do you find a provider? That's tough for me to answer. I feel like word of mouth is really key, right? If you have friends that have people that they trust that they've been seeing for a while, I would do that. I would tend to not look at Groupons and things like that. I, as I mentioned before, like you don't want them to just follow a cookbook recipe like, oh, you want in this area? I'm a robot and I'm just going to do this and this is what I do on everybody. And one good thing is going on social media and seeing if they're doing it and seeing how they're doing it. What is the average cost of Botox? It's expensive for us as physicians who are treating to actually even have the Botox ourselves. So that's why the price can be higher. And actually we don't really make that much money on it because there's such a competition on it, you know, in terms of actually the amount of money you're making on each of your Botox treatments. So that being said, it is expensive and you're average. paying for, you know, experience and stuff. Average is like, it can range from $12 to $14 a unit, and I think is about the average right now. So say for but, instance, somebody who wanted to do their 11s and they were like maybe right, forehead, it, how much would that be? If you're doing a full, that would probably be $700. When do you get Botox before an event? Say you have this wedding or an event, Right. when if, should you get it? If you have a really special event, what I usually tell my patients is, first of all, if it's the first time they've ever done it, maybe do it once before just so that you know once like before when like three months like, before yeah like sometime way before so that you can feel like you know what it is because if it's like your wedding and you want to make sure you feel comfortable if you feel different it's gonna mess with your brain too right. but if you're gonna go before a special event and you want it to be the most ideal i would do it like probably two to four weeks beforehand so it's it's most potent and you can also do some slight corrections if you feel like you need more or less Welcome to Social Stuff's On The Streets. I'm Step One. And I'm Step Two. And today we are in Santa Monica and we're gonna be asking people questions about their skincare routines. Are you wearing sunscreen today? I am. Amazing. Are you wearing sunscreen right now? No, I'm not. No, I'm not. No, I've got some more there, which is, it's in my car. Are you wearing sunscreen? No, nah, this, this is really soft. For like New soft. Zealand, we have a thin ozone layer. So you really burn in New Zealand. Mm. So like this is like, sim this is easy for me. Are you wearing sunscreen today? No. <laughs> we've got a little something for you. So we've got the Dual Defender by Dr. Sandra Lee. This is a moisturizer with 30 SPF. No, that feels really good. It feels nice, like huh? Nice and, and you knock two steps out in one. Exactly. Moisturize and sunscreen. Since you are not wearing sunscreen today, we wanted to give you the Dual Defender is the moisturizer with SPF 30 in it. And this is for you today. This is our Dual Defender sunscreen and moisturizer, so oh, it's a nice day. little two-in-one for you. Thank you very much, Steve. So do you guys have skincare routines? Yeah, but it's very simple. Face wash and then a lotion. Love it. What about you? I got the same. I got like a little moisturizer in the morning and then a like cleanser one in the evening. Love it. Yeah, face wash and moisturizer. Same thing. Love it. I just use like cleanser and moisturizer and that's it. So this is our Hyaluronic Acid Facial Moisturizer. Ooh. Oh, it smells good. It wow, smells look how glowy your hand yeah, is. It's very glowy, I like that. Do you have a skincare routine? No, and I need one. I mean, oh. I, I do, I mean, I do. Like, I moisturize daily, but I don't have a bitter routine. Okay, so we're gonna send you home with a hyaluronic acid moisturizer. Is that a hard word to remember? Hyal hyaluronic? Hyal it can be. How's it feel? Oh my God, I turned American. <laughs> It's so good. No, it does feel, it feels nice. It feels rejuvenating. So I'm going to have you guys test out um, our new Hyaluronic Acid Moisturizer. Feels good. Very feels smooth. good, <laughs> yeah. <Very smooth. laughs> Put on your face, eh? Yeah, I know. You want to try? All there. right. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> this is a challenge called the most expensive taste test. And the reason I'm going to challenge my bestie, Raquel, 
is because she thinks she has a nose for the most expensive and the least expensive and that you can spot it. I didn't choose the bougie life, the bougie life chose me, so. <laughs> <laughs> you go towards the bougie. The more bougie, the better. So, I thought we would have a little fun little game here. In fact, the first thing I'm gonna do, you always tell me about, that's the really good tequila, that's the best tequila. A tequila. A tequila. And I'm always thinking, you know, do you really know which tequila you're trying? And do you really know whether it's the best tequila? So, oh, yeah. you're gonna be put to the test okay. today. Hey. We got our special so shot glasses. All right. This is just water, right? Which one's which? Yes. We have no idea. Cheers, okay, pop it. Pimples. Oh, I can already tell. Now the pressure's on, girl. Oh, she can tell because of the legs. Ah, oh, no, this is. It. That's a why. To me, this I is. I know. Cheap. That's what I mean. I thought that tastes pretty good, actually. The first one is the expensive one. Sad. Oh yeah, the first one is expensive one. Me personally, they're not my tequilas of choice. Definitely, this is the less expensive she's, one. She's backtracking right now. And See what she's doing? She's like, oh. I don't like blancos. I like añejos. Yeah. She's a little scared because she doesn't want to be wrong. No, yes. no. I'm gonna just take it off because I'm not losing it. experiment. Why are you being a little wussy and not taking it off? I'm calling you out is what I'm doing. Let's see. Sometimes you need to be called out. Let's see. All the way. No, do it all the way. No way I'll die. Okay, let me see the second one. Yeah. I'm gonna but I'm, I don't want to taint your opinion. Oh, yeah. This is the most expensive one and this is the cheap one. Oh wait, That's wait, bad. wait. That's wrong. Ah! The one that was closest to you guys was the more expensive one. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I was about to like go ape on you. <laughs> like, God. Oh, yeah. Man. Here comes number two. Why wouldn't you want to follow up with some nice tequila with some nice chocolate? Well, I mean, I will already tell you which is a Reese's peanut butter cup. And I'm gonna say that I actually like it better than the other one. Dude, I'm smart. That's how like, you're a doctor. The second one is the most expensive yeah. one. But I actually prefer the Reese's. I like prefer the I prefer the expensive one because the peanut I'm butter good. is like really, really good. That's correct. Give us a real challenge. All right, so the third one is a lotion. Which one is uh, the more expensive? Okay, so. I can so, already tell which one it is. It doesn't matter because sometimes the most expensive have very. I can tell you which one's the most expensive, but I can also tell you the one that I prefer. Wait, it's not again. It smells really good. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> How did I not Almost see that coming? got you. But I will tell you already right now which one I think that I'm gonna like more. I actually think I'm gonna like this one more. It's more of a lotion and it's light and it's more moisturizing and I think it probably has hyaluronic acid in it, I'm gonna guess. But just because of the way it's creamy and I think it looks like my favorite lotion. Well, this one has ceramides, so, okay. Can hyaluronic, spell, can you spell ceramides? C-E-R-I-M-I-D-E-S. <laughs> but in any way, okay, so which one do you wanna try first? Let's okay. try this one. Light and creamy, and it absorbs in. No. You should have just gone through her medicine cabinet well, and gone yeah. like yeah. some of the freaking pricey stuff. So that felt really nice. And now I'm gonna <laughs> do the next one. Okay, let's go. This one has a fragrance to it, and let me tell you, fragrances are really nice, and it really does feel great when you put it on. But it actually dries your skin out. Oh more, no! So it's not as gonna be as useful. This one is the expensive one. I can just feel it, it's just so thick yeah. and moisturizing. It feels nice, but I already feel it drying me out, honestly. Really? Like I feel it, because I know the smell is good, but it just evaporates and then it's just gonna, in the long run, it's not going to benefit me as much as this. Well, because so you have point, dry, dry skin and there's certain things that you don't like. Right. My point is this, I do think that this is the most expensive one, and I think we both agree and that that's the most expensive and this is the less expensive, is that correct? Well, actually, the one on the right is Raquel's that's in the kitchen. The one on the left is your Is my ah! <laughs> You know no, what? The, like the smell was so familiar, and I'm like, where have I smelled this before? It's on your hand, probably just <laughs> this morning. But you know what? If you look at it, this one is very right. glowy. And that's not really what I look at. I'm looking at more at whether it's moisturizing me well. And this this is brand new. But this is almost cheating because this is yours. No, oh, it's because I know <laughs> I want something that 
is not very expensive that I can use on a daily basis that is really gonna moisturize my skin. And I love how it's especially cool to the touch. And so it really kind of wakes you up yeah. and soothes you. You're gonna have to try this. This is for you. Yeah, I, it's I not love your glow, the brightening color gonna, that you have. Yeah. Oh my it's God, not, and, and this is really nice to use every now and then, but for me, in the long run, it's not really serving the purpose of actually moisturizing your skin because the moisture is being evaporated you always with, get the, the, neck with the smell. Girls because and, and that's the thing, a lot of moisturizers, and I tell her this all the time, but she's still not gonna listen to me. A lot of things are really expensive, and in particular in skincare, the more expensive it is does not mean that it is better. All is that tequila coming joke. through? No, water. It's water. It's the water taste test. Okay, let's go. Cheers. Okay. I can do shots of this. No problem. Well, I'm like three shots in, girl. Just, just put this in when we're doing the tequila. Look, look at, look at what I can do. <laughs> Don't make me laugh. It almost came out my nose. Well, of course you can drink that. It's water. I think I'm a little buzzed. Wait, 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 wait. Really? Oh, I Which one I is that. it? Because I want to buy it. No, it's I didn't say that. Good. I said that for this. <laughs> regular Trader Joe's. The I know, I'm hearing it. I almost made me Really? Yeah. Aquapana? No, Evian. Evian. Aquapana? Oh, Aquapana. <laughs> okay. oh what do you have for me us now, Miss Okay. Miss? This one is a hyaluronic acid serum. I feel like you're having us drop acid. Which one? I feel like when it's watery, like water and a little bit of oil, that's what I basic. like. Okay, that's And like I've been through basic. a lot because okay. I So swear you would heart. use this one. Oh, absolutely. And if it's cheap, then we're gonna throw your other one out. And yeah. Okay, oh, absolutely, look, you can totally tell. What's the answer? The one that's closest to Raquel is the drugstore, cheap one. You're and right. the one closest to Sandra is my the hyaluronic acid this must be expensive to be <laughs> did you see that she's doing a show wow i mean if she could do a show i could do a show come yeah, on now we can hello oh, your next pens. test pen black pens okay i mean i know this pen i've seen this pen this one has a nub on it that tells me that it takes an extra little price to take that little nubby off. This is the most expensive yeah. one right here. Yeah, this, I, I would agree, because it flows really nice, and yeah. I don't know if that is the determining factor, but this one doesn't feel as nice, and it has a really fat tip, like it doesn't have as much of a fine tip, and I feel like the fine tip is more expensive. <laughs> as invested as drunky. <laughs> You're correct. We're correct. We're correct. Yes. We're correct. That was so much fun. That we, was super fun. No, I think I think we both won. Um, I don't know. All I, I know is that I'm drunk, so I won. Well, I think we both won because I think with skincare, actually, when you when you get to do a side by side, it really like kind of shows you what you might like about something. And if you can take out that price, you can really look at things more objectively. I feel like more people should do that. Like they should do that at stores where they should try out different ones and not know the price and not know you know what the brand is and then. And I bet you they'll, they'll choose the one that they're gonna really like better and it's gonna work better for them. Well, cheers, cheers to another great episode. That was so much fun. It's so much fun to hang out with her and it really gives me a great excuse to do that. If you guys like the show, what do they need to do? Hit like and subscribe now because you do not wanna miss the next one. Cheers. Have you checked out the All Access membership page? You can click here to check it out.